This is video number 25 in this series on fixed dose solfege, and in the 24 videos that preceded this, we concentrated primarily on syllable reading exercises from Dandelo's book in treble, bass, and alto clefs, and we also took a pretty detailed look at the first book from Danhauser's series, Solfege de Solfege, and we actually ended up covering about one-third of the exercises in that book. The remaining two-thirds, of course, I left to you to practice on your own. And we talked about various techniques for confronting the challenges that we might come across in those exercises. And as I mentioned in the last video, I'm going to strongly recommend that you feel comfortable with that first book before moving on to the next videos in this series. That doesn't mean that you can read through all the examples perfectly without making any mistakes. As I mentioned before, it means that you possess the tools necessary to confront any of the challenges that you might come across. Uh, means effective utilization of the stop and recovery methods that we've talked about so much, utilization of grace notes, warm-ups, etc. So my plan for the next videos in this series is actually to pick up the pace a little bit. And for that reason, I'm going to suggest that you spend a little bit more time on your own practicing the material. And what I'm going to do is kind of cherry pick examples from Dan Hauser's second and third books. And I'm also going to be introducing four clefs that we haven't looked at in this series. And once we've learned those four clefs, uh, there won't be any other clefs to learn. So what I'm going to do in this video is go ahead and start as usual with a syllable reading exercise or two in alto clef from Dandelo's book. And then I'm going to kind of give you an overview of the clefs that we're going to be looking at in the videos that are going to follow. And then we'll go ahead and do a couple examples in soprano clef. And after that, we'll conclude with two examples from Danhauser's second book. One will be in treble clef in F major, and the other one will be in bass clef in D major. So let's go ahead and get started with those examples in alto clef. So this is example number 19 in alto clef in Dandelo's book, and we'll take it about like this. One, two, three, four. And I'll give you a count of four like that. Uh, and as usual, I'm going to ask you to kind of group the notes as you see fit, uh, just in no case should you be reading each note individually. Uh, but let's go ahead and do this one. Put an accent on the first note of each of your groups, and your groups might be different than mine. But let's go ahead and do this one. I'll give you a count of four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Fa, do, re, mi, re, la, do, sol, fa, la, do, fa, la, re, do, sol, fa, la, do, sol, re, fa, mi, si, sol, do, la, si, do, fa, la, mi, fa, la, re, do, sol, la, si, do, do, re, sol, mi, fa, do, la, re, do, sol, la, mi, fa, do, fa, la, do, fa, la, do, sol, re, fa, do, mi, re, la, do, fa, re, si, sol, do, la, fa. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next one. It's number 21, same routine. Basically, I'm going to give you a count of four. We'll take it about the same tempo. Here we go. One, two, three, four, si, fa, re, mi, fa, do, si, fa, re, sol, do, fa, si, re, la, sol, fa, do, si, fa, do, fa, si, mi, re, sol, si, fa, do, fa, do, la, si, sol, re, fa, do, sol, sol, re, si, fa, si, re, do, la, fa, do, si. And let's go ahead and look at one more in alto clef. This one's a little bit longer, but as usual, same routine. I'll give you a count of four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Do, sol, do, la, sol, mi, re, sol, la, mi, do, fa, mi, la, re, la, sol, re, mi, la, si, fa, do, sol, la, fa, sol, mi, si, la, sol, re, mi, do, la, re, Fa, do, re, sol, do, do, mi, sol, la, do, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do, re, sol, do, sol, re, sol, do, sol, 
la re sol re do mi re sol fa si do fa sol si re sol do so as i mentioned before we're going to be looking at four new clefs in the videos that follow and i wanted to kind of give you an overview of all these clefs and how they fit into a larger context so let's go ahead and look at a couple of notated examples that i've prepared so you can see what we have looked at is treble clef, which is at the very top, alto clef, which is exactly in the middle, and bass clef at the very bottom. And what's remaining, of course, is soprano, mezzo-soprano, tenor, and baritone. And I just kind of wanted to point out that treble clef is really no different than if we were to place a C clef right there. I mean, you, you generally, you never see that, but uh, it, that, that's where middle C is. And baritone clef uh, is basically the exact same as if we were to place the C clef right there. And actually, you do see that clef sometimes, and that's exactly the same clef as the baritone clef that we have on the left side. And bass clef is basically no different than if we were to place a C clef right there, which you also never see, like the treble clef that we have at the top. But um, I just kind of wanted to point out that what we're doing here is sliding the clef, the C clef upwards by one line at each step. So that gives us basically all seven notes of a diatonic scale. So if we put a note at C in the treble clef in between the third and fourth lines, if we're counting from the bottom up, then what we have at the top is Do, and then if we go down to the soprano, we have la, and then mezzo soprano fa, re, si, sol, mi. And that gives us all seven of the notes in a diatonic scale, which is the reason why we do not need to know any other clefs besides these. And these clefs will come in handy uh, for various reasons. I mean, for, for, we'll talk about transposing instruments a little bit later, but that's one of their prime utilizations. But I also say that you often see these clefs uh, in Renaissance music, for example. Uh, soprano clef was the primary clef for the right hand in keyboard music into the 18th century. And they're just very useful to know. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example in soprano clef, which is the first one we'll be dealing with. It looks like this is number two. And you can see there's a C clef, so our points of reference are going to be Do and Sol. And we have them marked there as usual. I'm sure you guys know the routine by now. So let's go ahead and do this one. I'll give you a count of three for this one, and it'll be like one, two, three, okay? And then we'll just go through it. So here we go. One, two, three. Do, Re, Do, Sol, La, Sol, Do, Si, Do, Sol, Fa, Sol, Do, Si, Do, Do, Re, Do, Do, Re, Sol, La, Do, Re, Do, Si, Sol, Fa, Do, Si, Do, Do, La, Fa, Sol, Do, Re, Si, Do, Do, Re, Si, Do, La, Sol, Re, Do, Si, Do, Fa, Sol, Si, Do, Sol, Do. All right, let's take a look at the very next example in soprano clef, and then we'll move on to some Danhauser. So for this one, it's number three. I'm going to give you a count of four, and let's keep those reference points in mind. We'll take it at about the same tempo. The reference points are C and G. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Do, Re, Do, Do, Si, Do, Sol, La, Fa, Sol, Do, Re, Si, Do, Si, Re, Do, La, Fa, Sol, Si, Re, Do, Do, Sol, La, Re, Do, Si, Do, La, Sol, Re, Do, Fa, Sol, La, Sol, Re, Do, Re, Do, Do. All right, let's take a look at example number 16 from Dan Hauser's second book, our first example from his second book. And it looks like this. Take a look at it and see if you can identify any form. Form might come across as familiar. So we've seen this pretty often before in the uh, first book. 
So the form is ABA with a much longer B section in this case. And look to see if you can identify any modulations that might occur. And again, it's a familiar pattern for Danhauser. We can see that we have C major in the B section. Go ahead and highlight that in blue and also put in just a couple of grace notes in the A section uh, to get that C sharp and that B natural. Um, but let's go ahead and do this one. Pay attention to those dynamics. And we're going to take it at the indicated tempo of 112, which is about like this. One, two, three, four. So relatively fast. In fact, I, I would recommend, if you don't feel comfortable with that tempo, going ahead and pausing this video and going through this exercise several times on your own uh, before singing with me and using the recovery method. OK, so let's go ahead and do this one. Quick warm up in F major. Fa, la, do, re, si, sol, mi, fa. So first notes, do. So I'm just going to give you a ready and on this one. Here we go. Ready and. Do, si, la, si, do, re, do, re. Si, la, sol, la, si, do, si, do. Fa, mi, fa, sol, fa, mi, re. Re, do, re, si, la, si, sol, fa, la, fa. Do, so, do, si, do, re, so. Re, do, re, mi, do, la, re, do, si. So, re, mi, re, do, si, la, so, fa, mi, so, la, si, do, re, mi. So, re, mi, re, do, si, la, so, fa, mi, re, mi, do, do. Do, re, la, si, la, so, so. Si, do, so, la, so, fa, fa. Fa, la, do, si, 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 do. Do, si, do, re, do, si, 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 do. Do si do we do mi, do si do we do do, do si la si do we do re, si la so la si do si do, fa mi fa so fa mi re, re do re si la si so fa la fa. All right, let's go ahead and move on to an example in bass clef, also from his second book. It's example number 32 in D major. And it looks like this. Take a look at it and see if you can identify any modulations that occur in this piece. Where do you see accidentals? And what do those accidentals indicate? OK, so you can see we have a G sharp in the second system, which is a strong indication, of course, of A major. So we're going to go ahead and put in a stop sign there and go ahead and do an A major warm up. And go ahead and stop again after the double bar and do a D major warm up. And I'll give you a ready end and we'll come back in in those places. So let's go ahead and do this one. I'm going to assume this is supposed to be in cut time and that th that's a mistake that he has common time written there. So I'm going to recommend conducting a two pattern. We're going to go ahead and take this at the speedy tempo indicated, uh, the half note equals 72 beats per minute which is going to be about like this. One, two, one, two. So I'm going to say the same thing I said before. If you're not comfortable with this tempo, definitely go ahead and pause this video and go through this on your own before singing with me. Uh, let's go ahead and do this one. As I mentioned, when we get to those stop signs, we're going to go ahead and do our A major and D major warm ups. And then I'll give you a ready and and we'll come in on the, those places. So quick. D major warm up. Re fa la si sol mi do re. So first notes. La. All right, here we go. Ready and. La so fa si la la. So fa re si la si la so so fa. Re mi fa si si la so fa la so fa mi re. Stop. La do mi fa re si sol la. 
ready, and... Fa, la, sol, si, sol, la, do, si, do, re, do, re, si, sol, re, re, do. La, si, do, re, si, la, sol, la, do, si, re, do, re, si, la, sol, mi, do, si, la, sol, fa, re, do, si, la, sol, fa, mi, si, la. Stop. Re, fa, la, si, sol, mi, do, re. Ready, and. Mi, re, do, fa, mi, mi. Re do mi la so so mi la so so fa la si so re so si la fa re fa la so mi fa re do mi re fa mi so fa so la so fa mi re la so fa si la la so fa la re do do si la si so si so mi mi so mi do do mi do re mi fa so la so si so fa mi re mi fa so mi re do re fa mi so fa so mi re do la si do re do re si la so fa mi re and that's going to do it for this 25th video in the series. Next time, we'll continue with more examples from Dan Hauser's second book. Uh, we'll do a couple exercises in alto clef as well and continue our work with soprano clef. Uh, but as usual, until then, happy sightseeing.